What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 24 of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday, Apple, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you lo- so listen to podcasts. Or, of course, again, you can watch our beautiful faces on YouTube. Now, every day, or every episode, rather, we like to start with some advice, right? Yep. So, we're going to get right into it. And as y'all know who have been listeners we love if y'all would rate the advice in the comments. Let us know if you're listening and you think it's a 1 out of 10, 2 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Let's get it. But advice clip number one, how many versions of your hit song do you need to create? How many versions of your hit song do you need to create? If you don't know what I mean, you'll see. How many of your hot songs should you have? I'm sorry? should have nine versions of your hit record. Are you ready for it? Pull out your notepad, take out your phone, record this. Remember this, because this is the shit that you drove from Missouri to your war, right? You didn't come here for branding and all the other shit. You want the real information. So before you leave the studio, you got your shit mixed and mastered, you should get a clean version. You should have an explicit version. You should have an instrumental. You should have an acapella. That's clean acapella, dirty acapella. Do you ever want a radio DJ to play it? If so, you should have a clean eight-bar intro. You should have a dirty eight-bar intro. Don't you want to get your f***ing video on BET or network television? Because you're going to need a network television clean, and you're going to need a network television explicit. It is a lot. It's a long checklist. I, I think he was pretty straightforward. Yeah. Nothing for us to add there. <laughs> it, that, that was a fact, everything that he just noted. But um, I think... The first thing that this represents is the fact that a lot of times it's more work than artists perceive on the front end. We perceive on the front end, just coming to it, all of us in the game. Even though you already had the video and it's just chopping things up at that point, uh, or the song is just chopping things up at that point, well, except for, you know, making it explicit. You know, there's some tweaks. Just the fact that you have to do that at at a point where most people just think they're done. Yeah. All right? Really, it's something to think about. And... Honestly, it doesn't just go into radio tracks. Like he's talking about for a radio track campaign specifically, but Corey, I'm gonna let you list it out. You know how we talk about the YouTube version oh, of this, yeah, right? Yeah, the yeah. same thing actually does apply in many ways across the board, especially if you want to maximize what you get for your video views and the um the ways that they can be used for other people. And we'll go a little bit into that after Ja'Cory drops the the list. But go ahead and hit him with it. Yeah, well, first thing I want to say is I think the main thing – or the main thing I get from what he's saying is pay attention to what you're submitting things to, right? It always yep. goes back to there go. there's a different format. People accept different things. Like you said, there are going to be some TV networks that want the clean version and others are going to want the dirty version, right? Yep. So I think that's something that – especially a lot of smaller artists don't think about because they're not hitting that many outlets, you know, and that many um, things at one time. But I think it's a good habit to get yourself uh, into the, uh, a good habit to like build, build within yourself, you know what I'm saying? Just to get that stuff credit for if the opportunity just kind of comes up. Right. But what you're talking about is, is kind of advice that we give to clients on the YouTube side where we tell them when they release a song, they need a clean version, a dirty version, um, instrumental, uh, lyric video, a visualizer and if you like the song enough a music video right or if the song has enough traction and attention a music video and now this is making me think maybe acapella right so that's six the same way with this you come out of it with nine different versions of your song that could be worked in different scenarios or just dropped in general to give yourself more musical content that same strategy applied to youtube makes it to where with every single song you drop you now have at least five, six pieces of content for you two specifically to draw with it, right? What's the benefit of me doing that if I just want everybody to listen to my my music video? I mean, so I think the more obvious one is YouTube growth, right? It's probably one of the more consistent ways for an artist to keep up with the output of a YouTuber when it comes to YouTube. Because that, that's kind of what got us to telling clients that is, you know, a lot of times they would ask us like, hey, what's the best way to grow my YouTube channel? Um, and it's like, well, you need to drop as consistently as the YouTubers do because the thing that I don't think artists think about is that YouTube isn't created for music artists. It's, it's created for creators, right? So the average artist maybe is dropping, let's say, two, three pieces of content a week. If they're, I mean, not a week, but a month. They're just dropping a lot, of, a, a lot of music or something, right? 
But like there are YouTubers that drop three videos in, in a day, you know what I'm saying? Or three videos in a week. So these creators are moving at three, four X the speed you are on the same platform and the platform is gonna optimize for the the creators that have the highest output, which sadly is not the music artists, right? It's the, <laughs> the general YouTuber. But yeah. now you have this strategy where, you know, you at least can, maybe you're not completely competing with a YouTuber, but um, now thanks to like the additions of shorts, um, it's possible for you to get as close to that level as possible for a music artist, right? I'm dropping a song a month. That means I have at least six pieces of content a month. I'm around my music specifically, like hard, longer form pieces of content, plus my 15 shorts I was gonna post anyway, plus, I don't know, this vlog I already had planned coming out from this tour I just did, right? So I think that's the most obvious surface, surface level benefit to it. And then this doesn't apply to every artist, but you know, getting a little bit deeper into it, some versions of the songs you can apply like the same ISRC code to. And so the streams count when you talk about things like YouTube music um, and, and just like how those views are kind of counted specifically. So I think that's a benefit that like doesn't really matter for everybody, you know, very small percentage of artists, but the channel growth, like being able to just max out a, a hard long form content strategy for YouTube that can really be replicated because you can do this with every song you put out. Like every song, you know, clean, dirty, um, instrumental, right, uh, acapella, visualize a lyric video and then, eh, if it's moving enough make a music video right every song or would you just focus on the most important songs i would do it for every song just to have as much content as possible because the other thing too is but hold up but you know some of these people are talking about once a week i mean hey man that's what come with that that's, come, that's what come with picking that <laughs> I don't ball know like about full blown gary v and like that for an artist but no i get i get what you're saying but you would you would just go all yeah 100 percent. yeah because the other thing about it too is you know, we always tie it back to how do the consumers want to consume things. And there are some people that like to have a visualizer pulled up on their, their TV while they're, while they're working in the background. You yes. Know what I'm See, you're touching on something important because to me, I think people need to rethink what they think of when they hear a lyric video. Yeah. Right. So you can actually combine the audio and visualizer and lyric video into one. Yeah. If you want to. Right. Because the audio is just the audio. So it doesn't have to be the main video. They're going to hear it when they see the lyric video. Yeah. But the lyric video can now, based on how consumers consume stuff, be the visualizer. And then you just have it transcribed at the, the bottom. Just like how people watch a TikTok yeah. and then people see the text of what you're saying. Yeah. You can get away with doing that. So now you have that two in one because it's very hard for people to have very interesting lyric videos, right? I remember when lyric videos started popping and became and became way more popular before visualizers became a thing, right? And people just realized they could just do something interesting mm -hmm. beyond having the lyrics move around yeah, so much, right? Screen, yeah, so, bouncing yeah. on the screen. <laughs> and then everybody was just trying to like, like, you know, ponder on how they can make it interesting and more and more interesting. And you can only make that with so many, so interesting, right? Yeah. People aren't going to care but so much when it's all based around the lyrics and that's it. But if you got a cool visualizer because it was from a video game or something that you want to represent like mm -hmm. Lil Nas did with uh, Red Dead Redemption and putting it on Old Town Road or if you want to just actually have like some footage, it could be like a, a vlog of you Right. So that represents the song topic or not, not a, not a music video, but like just some flash and footage, kind of yeah. like how you think about the uh, canvas on Spotify. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like it could be like that, just repeating over and over again of you, or it could be something a little bit more extensive, but still not the pressure of a music video. Um, or again, of course, just taking content from anywhere, anywhere. And then you just transcribe the lyrics at the bottom yeah. and that'll be good enough. It'll hit the same purpose. And then you have that little bit of branding experience to make it more interesting, just a, uh, a norm, than a uh, regular lyric video. And fortunately for artists, that's so much easier to pull off. Most people don't necessarily have the lyric video skill set, at least without wasting a lot of time or yeah. spending a lot of time, rather, you know, to get it done. But a lot of people, you know. We all got phones. Yeah, we got phones. We can. <laughs> we know how to rip something yeah. from somewhere else and just paste it on top of a video and put that together. So, um, that that's what I would say to the YouTube list. Like when we first started doing it, it didn't. It we weren't in a space where consumers would respond to visualizers as much and as well in these different types of content. And TikTok wasn't popping as heavy. 
And so people weren't used to just being seeing transcriptions and stuff as much. But the way things have involved, you could take what three of those things off that list and make it one. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I think the best example I've kind of seen of it. I know the weekend does it a lot when he drops music. And then what made me realize it was uh the way Cardi B released up. Cause I was just looking at it, I was like, man, she dropped like nine pieces of content to this this one song on YouTube. Right. She, she had some other elements to it, right? Like she had like um BTS part one and two of the music video. She did this one thing where she called it a mood board, and it was really just in my opinion, the same thing as a visualizer, but it was just a bunch of different photos flashing across the screen while the song played in the background. So like she really milked it. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. why I say I think like to your point, yeah, if you're an artist where you don't have the resources to get all this stuff made, then yeah, a lot of them can be knocked into, you know, like a lot of them can you can take three ideas and turn it into one. Yep. But I mean, I think if you're trying to get like maximum bang for buck, you know, like maximum output for each one, you have the the budget for it and, and the, the brand um to be able to put it together. I do all of have all of it. One hundred percent. Like just just shooting out, bro. Just just max out YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's put that on the screen real quick just for people. Um, oh yeah, let's to, look at to it. be able to see. So yeah, Cardi B has Cardi yeah. B mood board visualizer. Yeah, uh, the live performance. All right, and let me. Kind of play a little bit of the move board visualizers. See if we can get a sense of what it looks like. Oops. Copyright? Nah, it's the. No, I'm not going oh, to. Nah, it's, it's muted. Right. Yeah, okay. it's muted. Now we're talking about the visual. <laughs> yeah, nobody's going to hear anything. <laughs> we ain't dealing with none of those copyright strikes. All right, so it's like a bunch of pictures flashing, mm -hmm. which is which is dope. And a little bit of video thrown in between. But that's actually pretty hard. Yeah, that's a fun. Because this actually does look like. It was the mood board for that scene. So mm -hmm. that's how they're matching it up. It's like when we came up with this scene, this was the mood board. Mm -hmm. And they probably had, you know, a mood board before this mood board. Yeah. You know what I mean? When yeah. they were in pre production. But but no, this is hard. I I actually like that concept. I would like to see that more. Yeah. This is show them the scene and then show them the the mood board or inspiration for that particular scene because that's what we do creatively all the time anyways yeah. usually some kind of inspiration or because it's hard to describe creative shit to people without giving them some reference points anyway. yeah yeah so now nah, that's that's a real hard and that's what idea. i like about this too is like it's taking the mundane taking that thing you have to do anyway and mm -hmm. turning it into like a really interesting piece of content heck yeah no nah, yeah. that that's a hard idea. yeah but she got a lot of yeah, instrumental instrumentals when i can understand like why everybody wouldn't want to do Right, you know that to me, I guess, would depend on your relationship with the producer, how yeah, they feel about and, it, and also just yeah, you know, your relationship with owning your own shit. Period. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, niggas don't want to get else no. take the track and then run it up on. Yeah, on exactly. Yeah. And niggas don't want to get Lil Wayne from some <laughs> random artist on YouTube. Right. right. So she also has her performance with Meg The Stallion. Oh yeah, the live performance video. Um, yeah. Um, she has. Behind the scenes. Part one and two. Part one and two. All right. So it's like really made a moment out of this. Where is part one? All right. So there's part one. I'm not going to play part one. Then there's the instrumental, an official lyric video. All this stuff is beautiful because the artist doesn't have to be involved. Mm -hmm. We already got the footage post production and stuff like that. So yeah, okay. So. What else does she have? We're going to count how many videos this is. The official music video, <laughs> official audio, and the radio edit. There we go. So she, Cardi B put up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of content posting this video. Yeah. Um, And then let's look at the start and the end. I'm saying she'll follow up. Uh... You know, dude's advice in the beginning clip, she really would have had to drop like 16, you know what I'm saying? Because imagine she did like <laughs> each of these for the other versions and right, things like that, bro. It could, get, it could get crazy, bro. True, true. Yeah. Uh, let, it, let me see. That was February 5th, 2021 when the radio edit dropped. And then the mood board, which was the final piece of content, was... March 16th. March 16th. So, yeah, she was able to take a whole month to pull all that stuff together. That's dope. That's dope. So... This is exactly what we're talking about. Of course, it's not a one size fits all. Maybe for some videos you do something like a mood board and some video or, or songs. Some songs you might not be inspired to that yeah, extent, right? Exactly. But the the concept is still true. Uh, you want to have those multiple versions out there. It's an easy way to milk the song itself 
and get different parts of your vision out there. And then also on the other end, it also helps other people use your content for their platform without you having to go back. Because that's really the main purpose of what um, he mentioned. I, I actually don't know his name, but I know it's uh, IG Art Rev Soul, or at least that's where they it's posted from. No, and that's, think, uh, that's think, the Rap Coalition guy, right? He not. I don't know if he's with Rap Coalition, but he they have the uh, the podcast. The, oh, with Wendy? Yes. Yeah. Come on, I know the name of podcast. I, I hate that I'm I'm missing it right now. Um, cheat the, the cheat code podcast. Yeah, yeah. Like he's he's one of those people. Um, but now nah, yeah, shout out to him for that that um post. Really dope. And we actually have something that goes along with the same category of radio. So we're gonna get in these radio campaigns talks today because there was a very interesting question within Brand Man Network about pay for play in a radio campaign he had now. For those of y'all who don't know about Brand Man Network, it is a completely free platform at the moment for artists, managers, producers, you know, marketers. We're all up in there. Um, a lot of dope members and you got free courses, all the stuff that we have at the agency, the things that we do for our clients. We have a lot of that stuff just in here in terms of free courses. You know what I mean? But also we talk with each other. We, we, we cover subjects like this. So check out this question right here. So, and shout out to Zini McQueen for the question. Hey, y'all, I have some questions. I submitted a single to be played on various independent radio stations abroad, specifically the UK. They're asking me to pay between $34 to $60 USD for my song to be added to rotation for a set time, say 30 days. Is this normal? Now, why does Zini say this? Well, I'm wondering if this is standard practice or if I'm being scammed. I'm independent and self-funded as much as I want to invest in myself. Rent and groceries are also due and I want to invest wisely. I'm thinking of waiting till my album is done and just promoting that instead of putting money into the first single. What do you recommend? So first of all, shout out to Zinni for this question and the transparency, putting this out here before you go through the 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 decision making yeah. right because a lot of people bring this stuff to us afterwards and i'm gonna come off out the gate and say sounds like a scam to me right and the only reason and i, I even said it in the comments like i don't have enough information but man that's so little money mm. for radio like like what are you getting getting for 34 to 60 dollars oftentimes when money is that little it's a scam because people are like, ah, eh, this is so little money. They're going to realize they got scammed, but it's also going to not be worth their time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to figure it out or like bother me to tr try to get that money back. That's what you see a lot of times. So it's this huge vision, this great thing, and it's barely any money at all. That part right there, the scam, my initial scam detector says, ah, eh, that might be positive. Yeah, I don't, it, it didn't give me scam vibe that gave me really small radio station vibe you know it's like think about like a independent station you were ran, find ran by like some guy you found on like facebook or something you true she did say independent radio station yeah so, so that might be real yeah that could be real yeah, yeah. i mean so, so i don't get scam vibes but i definitely don't think it's worth it and i know that's not the question they're asking is, if it's no, worth, that's part of it. That's it, part it of it because the second question. Because no, even because my second part was gonna be even if it was real, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, not at all. Because like you said, one that platform, if the platform was big enough to have a real impact, they'd be charging way more mm -hmm. than thirty four, thirty four to sixty dollars. Um, and then two, from my understanding of radio campaigns, they're not they're not that impactful unless you're running them in multiple regions for a long time. Right, so the way that I, I have a, um, I don't know what to call him. We just call him friend that used to work in radio, and yeah, the way he broke it down to me was like, yo, like you know, if, if you're, let's say you want to grow in the southeast, like hitting Atlanta isn't going to have the same impact as hitting Atlanta, and Charlotte, somewhere in South Carolina and Florida all at the same time because you know radio starts to spill over, um, and he's like, you know, and it takes like a long time of like pushing that through radio before it really start to have any type of impact. I think the number he gave me was like. At least like three to six months, you know what I'm saying? Something somewhere in there. Um, so one, this doesn't hit either of those boxes. Like I'm assuming you would just be hitting the one station. Um, since it's independent, it's probably not tied. It, I, like I said, we don't know, but I would assume it's not tied to any other 
independent radio network or anything, or I'm assuming that would have been a part of the price that they pitched them or they're leaving it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, yeah, like the 30 days wouldn't be worth it, even if that was worth it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then we talk about even if that was legit and, and the money was worth it, the audience was there. Zenia, you you will ideally be budgeting for like you know four or six months of this. You know what I'm saying? To, to truly see it. So there's a couple of different reasons why like my it's not worth it. Dar would go off before my scam. <laughs> dar, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, no, I, I I'm actually with you on that because I mean to sum it up, I've seen radio campaigns not be effective for 150k. Yeah, so that looks, that's so a great. Thirty point. dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, right? Yeah. Especially before the track's already moving. Yeah. So, no, Zini, I stay away from that, stray away from that. Um, but really appreciate the question. And I still would love you to answer the nuances that I asked in the comment section um, in terms of like, why did you actually look for all these stations abroad? Was it just an opportunity that came your way? Or do you have some kind of strategy? Because what I see a lot of times is I'll be talking with people and They'll have opportunities because somebody hit them up. Yeah. Scam or not, it could be a real opportunity. And now all of a sudden they're having FOMO for something that was nothing to do with their strategy. It was like, all right, why does that matter? It's all a waste of money if you don't do anything to capitalize off of it and you yeah. don't have a full blown strategy built to, you know, see it through. So why are you doing this? Um, is it, again, did, was it just something you learned about and said, ooh, let me try it out? Or is it, do you have a full blown international strategy? Yeah. If so then you know we'll talk about that when you finally answer that question. Yeah, I'm saying and real quick too because I think the other uh, big point hinted at that that I do think we need to touch on is that a lot of times artists will assume things are scams just because they're charging money for it. Like you even see in the question is like, is this a common practice? Right? Isn't this technically pay to play? I saw someone in the comments mention like, oh, it's technically payola. So in the world of radio, I understand. Like oh, yeah. radio is. Technically, I think I, I'm not 100 percent sure. So nobody quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure radio is the only one that has like practices against payola in it. I don't yeah. think any other form of music right, right, really right. has that. You know what I'm saying? The other ones is kind of like you know they paint this illusion that nobody does it, um, but the reality of it is one is done at all levels. At high levels, they just they just do it differently. I'm not paying you directly, but hey, Sean, I fuck with you so. Hey man, go to this really nice restaurant downtown. Steak on me. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, the same <laughs> shit, bro. Same fucking shit. Um, but then at a smaller level, what I think artists have to realize is that if you're finding anyone in 2023 or moving forward offering you any type of service or opportunity, it's, it's going to be some money involved <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, because these sure. are people building their businesses off offering the thing. And so just because someone is trying to charge you for the thing does not mean that the thing is a scam. Now, you yes. should, of course, look into it and make sure they are legit. And like Sean was saying that the money's even worth it. Like, do you have a strategy for it? But once you tick those two boxes off, then you can't just call something a scam just because they're trying to charge you. Long, long gone are the days where any of this shit was happening for for free. You know what I'm saying? Because I always look at it like, bro, the playlists get such such a crazy amount of flack for like charging for a playlist. And I'm like, I get it, bro. Like if I took my months and months and, and years and my own revenue to build up this playlist that I can't even really make money off of because if Spotify found out they're shutting this shit down, I'm charging for it. I'm sorry, bro. Somebody paying me to get into it. So yeah. certain parts of it I get, you know what I'm saying? But I also get why artists think it's a scam when they hear money involved. But I don't know. I feel like that's one of the the the, the most um one of the most hurtful things that like smaller artists can think is like assuming equating yeah. charge charging must mean they're about to scam me. Yeah, no, that's that is a fact. That is a fact. Like like you said, people gotta eat. Yeah. Like, everybody's not just going around doing stuff for free. And even if it's free in terms of no finance, right? Economics teach you ain't nothing free. Yeah. You know, somebody losing yeah. somewhere alone. So you should expect maybe a, a favor or just some goodwill, show some love, whatever that looks like. Cause we have had playlisters put our artist music on their playlist for free because they really, really rock with the yeah, playlist. Yeah. Right. But that's a relationship you want to build. Maybe you have a concert and you throw some free tickets yeah, at them, right? So they like, want something too. Yeah. So <laughs> still don't be selfish about it. Yeah. Just expect because at some point people will see you, you know, move along, start winning, and they're like, yo, man, I mean, come on, Lisa, thank you. Yeah. Even a thank you. <laughs> like, yeah, but that's one on. of the, the best things to remember about music, bro. People are gonna either take that money and Cash, percentages, or favors. Those yeah. are the, the three ways everybody in music wants to get paid. Either Pretty give me much. some money, 
give me a cut of something forever or give me something that will clock me up in my circle. Do me a big favor. You know what I'm saying? That could that could help me out, bro. And like, so you, you yeah, like you said, you get in charge one way or another. <laughs> Oh, you ain't got five hundred. Give me, give me thirty percent um, of a fifty-year licensing. Oh yeah, I'll give you that. Hey, that's that is the reality. Get <laughs> used to it. That's all I gotta say. To that. <laughs> now, being authentic is something that a lot of artists struggle with. But I want to play this clip mm-hmm. that really speaks on your artist development phase when you're trying to create music that's actually gonna hit. How do you make music? that people believe. There's this amazing clip, unexpectedly from Sean Paul, or a little <laughs> Sean Paul doc that I thought was crazy and I wanted everybody to hear it. Check this out right here. These are actually, so <laughs> this is not Sean Paul for those who are confused. <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> people was <laughs> <to> me. <laughs> <laughs> These are our folks that are gonna be talking, that are talking about him because this is his doc. He'll probably be in here at some point where we play. I asked him, have you ever made a song, like a party song, like a girl's record? Because knowing his background, to try and be like, well, I'm going to sing cultural records about what's wrong in the ghetto, for example. And it's like, no, not from you. He's like, bro, nobody don't believe you. You know that, right? You're not the person that's going to be able to preach. So why don't you sing about what you are? And I'm like, what am I? What do you mean? He's like, you are the guy that goes into the dances and you talk to other guys' girlfriends and then you get a fight. And I'm like... Bro, that was when I was an adolescent. And he's like, yeah, but that's you. Sing about girls, sing about party. And I was like, all right. He's a charismatic girls man from back in the day. Girls would call the house, hi, is Sean there? And like hang up. Once he started singing songs about girls, everybody was like, yeah, that sounds like you. And I started expressing myself more that way and just becoming more of myself in the song. And then I started to become more of a popular artist. So by 90... All right, I'll stop it right there. Y'all make sure y'all see this Sean Paul doc. They actually, it's actually really, really dope. We'll put the link in the description below so y'all can get to it. But yeah, that that right there, I mean, he, it says so much. Mm-hmm. But Jacory, I'll let you start. Yeah, I mean, I think the funniest part of it was when he was like, yo, that cultural, political talk, nah, not you. Because that's, that's real, bro. Like, I think, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes artists would come into the game wanting to talk about certain things, um, express certain things that I'm not saying that you can express or can't feel, but, like, you might not necessarily be the messenger in which the audience wants to receive it from, you know? Um, and so I like that aspect of it where someone was really enough to say, like, hey, bro, no, nah, people don't want to hear that from you, right? And I, I don't I don't know the reason why he said that. I'm, I'm guessing that's more in the dark, probably about, like, Sean Paul's background or something. Yeah, that, yeah, so a little bit of his background, he ain't from the hood. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it eventually. Yeah. So they basically like, bro, nobody wants to hear you talking hood struggles from a guy that's not from the hood. Right, which right. I, which and, I feel like is fair I, critique. Right, but, and why things should be better, da, da, da. You know, I'm not saying he had, like, the – perfect life or whatever but yeah apparently from what i understand he's from across town and he would be talking yeah. about a neighbor, you know an area and, and lifestyle that people didn't believe from him yeah yeah and that's real bro like i mean i can't name how many artists i've come across where i listen to the music and i look at them and i listen to the music and i look at them again i'll be like i don't believe any of this <laughs> <laughs> none of this is clicking with me bro yeah. like go back to the, the board and try again so I, I think it's important to have people around you like that that'll, that'll let you know you yeah. don't speak for these people um but then the second thing the guy said which is he was just like bro like this side is who you are you know and you know you're i won't say lucky but let's say thankful should be thankful enough that this version of you that is the real you there's a market for music about that type of stuff mm. you know what i'm saying so like hey you're just a womanizer you're just a partier you know what i'm saying which to someone that i'm assuming that wants to talk about real life shit that probably would be damn near like an insult to them you know what i'm saying <laughs> but now nah, i want to talk about you know what i'm saying the the, the, the struggles and you want me to go make some ass shaking music it's like yes bro like that's all you do in real life is go to places where ass shaking music play so <laughs> but I, I think like that to me is the important message of it for artists is you know you can play a character in a sense. Um, you can kind of like play something that maybe doesn't align with like who you are as a real person. But then you have to kind of ask yourself, is the thing or the the person that I represent um, in reality, like, is there a market for that? And would I be better off making something that, that, that speaks to that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 
this is one of those cool snippets because it's so layered, right? You just touch on a few layers and each of those layers go really deep based on conversations I've had with artists, friends, where there is that struggle between the image you dream of projecting and the reality of who you are. Yeah. All right? It's like, man, I want to be this super hero. I'll just leave it at that because there's different <laughs> types of superheroes that artists say they want to be. Yeah. Right. And that's what they would feel like the world needs to see or is based off of somebody they were inspired by. But there's a moment where many artists that I've seen that make an impact, right, have to come to grips with, okay, that's my inspiration, but I'm nothing like that. Yeah. All right. My music is going to hit different. So you'll be surprised. Like some of these artists out there who are huge and you'll be like, man, this music that this guy makes has no substance, da 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 And if you hear this art dude say his favorite artist, they'll mm-hmm. be like KRS-One yeah. or something like Rakim, you know, stuff like that. Like J Electronica, it'll be like some deep shit. But that wasn't his market that he yeah. found. Whether yeah. it was time in his life or what, you know, the life he was living, whatever. So... Like that's just the reality of it, but it's, if it's you, it's usually going to make more of an impact. And I think when there's so many times where we want to project something, and we would love because it's who we want to be almost, yeah. right? And sometimes you can make that superhero work. I think there are artists out there who have made that superhero work, um, but oftentimes the ones who make the the greatest impact are the ones that we feel like, yo, this is them. Yeah, it relates. We connect. And is that real? So, like, be vulnerable and put yourself in the music. Because I think part of him admiring the type of content that he was putting in the music, that means there was probably a part of him, too, that I don't want to say full on was embarrassed, but there was something that he wasn't appreciating about that side of himself. Right? He even said that, like, that was old me, right, in mm-hmm. that clip. Right, so it's like something in his mind is already trying to involve past it, you know. Yeah. Maybe he had like a family and kids or some shit at that point. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I gotta go back and watch it. I yeah. gotta go back and watch it. But I think the other thing too to think about in the whole, I say like character. Do I have a character? Is the maintenance of the character? You know what I'm saying? Like over long term. So right. I've been thinking about his situation. Let's say he did take that route, and you know, let's just assume people like it. And what comes with that, right? Now people are looking at you as almost like a political or cultural spokesperson about certain issues. Not every artist can handle that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They want you to show up at certain events and, and, and things, right? And like certain um social political events. Not every artist wants to go to those. Now you to... feel like you're doing homework. Yeah, exactly, you bro. you naturally reading that shit or watching those channels. So yeah. now you got to make sure you watch one. Yeah. Or watch 30 minutes of <laughs> CNN before you get on the mic. <laughs> exactly, bro. It's like uh, you were just trying to rap about the struggles in your neighborhood and then the music industry on turns you into Martin Luther King. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we see that. We see that happen, you know? Yeah, which I respect. <laughs> Not Lil Meek. Lil, Lil Baby? No. Yeah, that's Lil Baby and Meek Mill. Yeah. They both had moments where Meek Mill said, hey, I don't want to be a martyr. If they come at me for this oh, stuff, yeah. like, I'll stop. I'll switch up off this stuff. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. not what I'm here. I'm just trying to get money. And Lil Baby basically <laughs> said the same thing when he came out with that song. Yeah. And, uh, what, 2020 or 2021 or whatever about off of the back of George Floyd and everything. They both kind of put that out there. Like, yeah. I'm just saying what I'm saying. I'm expressing myself as an artist, but don't put me in this category. I'm not that guy to carry this flag. Yeah, bro. Because it goes back to the whole um, creating the reality for your audience. If you put it out there enough, eventually they will start to believe it and they will treat you as such. Yeah. This man is telling me in all of his music he wants to be the hood hero, the hood savior. Hey, man, I'm about to start putting some societal burdens on you that come with that, you know, because this is what you asked for. Yeah. And I think even to a um less extreme but probably more common degree, it's like all the rappers who come out portraying like they already have money when they first come out. Mm-hmm. And so I'm always like, that's a dangerous slope because in order to portray that you have money, you have to keep doing things that require money to keep up the image. And now you're burning yourself dry, you know what I'm saying, trying to maintain this character that, you know what I'm saying, that isn't really who you are anyway. It's like, yo, on the internet, you know what I'm saying, you little, I, I don't know, you little whoever with the chains and shit out, but at home, you know what I'm saying, you're just a normal guy, bro, you're cool. And it's like, because you feel like there's no audience for that. But, you know, we tell people all the time that the internet is segmented, right? The music industry, uh, music audiences are segmented. 
there's a niche for everything, even if you feel like you don't see it in, in mainstream music culture. Um, but I, I personally never see any wrong with either side. Like if you're an artist that's, that wants your your artist character to be authentic to you and true to yourself, like great, go for it. If you're an artist that wants to create a character and like play this person that's nothing like you, great, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm cool with that as well. I think like no matter which side of it you pick, you have to understand like what you're committing to um, in terms of that brand you're about to build and like what might come with it. And yeah. then like what he talked about, is there a musical audience for it? You know, yeah. do people want to hear music about that? I think it's really hard for someone to betray something that's nothing like them though. Mm. Right. Not talking about acting. Right. Because that's for a period of time. Yeah. Right. You put on that character, but over an extended career and have a uh, really high level of success. I don't know, man. I would love to see an artist that that fits the bill for Because I know Beyonce says Sasha Fierce. Right. The alter ego mm-hmm. isn't her, but it is her. If you really think about it, too. It's like, no, that's not how you carry yourself in your own life. Generally speaking, in some ways, maybe you don't feel like that. It's a certain level of confidence that you might project like more expressively than you would in your regular life. But it's like it's in you, though. Yeah. Right. I think that's a difference. So it's like, okay. so I feel like there has to be some level of connection in you. And it has to come from that space to really make that level of connection with people for the most part, especially over extended period uh, of a career. Yeah. That's that's just my thoughts on it though. Yeah, but I feel like those are the best. That's the best middle ground. Is you you as an artist, you create a character that is based off of real life personality traits that you have, because then it makes right. the, the character easier to play. It makes mm-hmm. it easier to commit to, and you know, it's not. I don't think it's super difficult creating a character in, in that instance because you can just um, you can just almost like over dramatize like real life things about yourself. Like, hey, I right. am a guy that's really into politics and like, and cares about social issues. But when I'm online, I'm like really playing that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm really going deep into it. I'm coming off super intellectual. Right. It's not how I am in, in real life necessarily, but it's exaggerated. You know what I'm saying? It's an exaggerated thing that's true to me. So I, I personally think those are the best characters um, to maintain because yeah, I think the playing a completely different character can probably get draining, you know, at some point. Um, that's probably where that you get the, too. The sentiments from different artists that literally will say things like, I don't feel like I'm myself. You know what I'm saying? The, like, or, you know, you'll hear from like pop artists sometimes. The, the label made me be someone that I wasn't. Oh, that they are saying to me is like, hey, the, the label's like, hey, bro, this real life you? Nah, like, be like this, be like this, be like this. And they essentially create a character for them, you yep. know what I'm saying? To play. And then the artist falls in line to it. So I think that middle ground between what about myself am I willing to base my character off of? Um, and then let me just exaggerate that. I think I do think that's the best like middle ground. Let's talk about that, what you said too, because getting lost in the sauce is a real thing. Very real like, thing. You say <laughs> stuff like that like loosely, but when you're portraying something and you're having certain types of success, we already are familiar with imposter syndrome, right? Mm-hmm. Well, think about imposter syndrome for a space that you attacked in a way that you didn't even desire. It's one thing like I built this business and I'm killing it in this business, but dang, I I kind of feel like I don't deserve it. Da da da. But I really want to build this business. You, you at least want what you're going for in that way, mm-hmm. right? But if you're doing something that's internally in conflict with who you are spiritually, your value system, or just physical comfort, then it gets even deeper, and then you find that success. Like it's literally like hanging on to the side of the pool and at some point like drifting back and you're trying to reach and you can't reach the side of the pool. You can't find yourself. Like, where the fuck am I? And how did I get here? Wasn't it you? Like a week ago, <laughs> like that was in the uh got caught in like a riptide or some shit. Oh yeah, yeah, that was me. Yeah, that was me. I didn't know what that was going on, but yeah, that was me. Oh <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I went by the drop no Jacory don't know itself. Like <laughs> facts. But that's that's uh, in some ways what happened, like just give it like the quick Quick man, note. so I was, I don't remember how old I was, man, but we were at the beach on like a family vacation playing, um, what's this shit called? Uh, Marco, Marco Polo, Polo bro, yeah, in the yeah. water. And so I'm just in the water, I said, Marco, and they're like, Polo. I'm like, Marco. And they're like, Polo. I'm like, damn, that sound kind of faint. And I'm like, Marco. And then like, just at some point I don't hear anything and I, and I open my eyes and I'm like, I don't even know how far, bro. I had to be like at least like 13 to 15 feet away from the beach, bro. And I just, I just realized like, oh shit, I got swept away. And that's when I started panicking. 
and I'm gonna drown and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you know, which is surprising to me. Before I knew that happened, that was good in the water. Yeah. And as soon as I realized what was going on, just you know what I'm saying? It was out of here. a whole other but, philosophical conversation. Yeah, bro. Not paying attention to my surroundings. You know what I'm saying? Thinking shit sweet. You know what I'm saying? Last I checked, the sand was right there. And then it wasn't no more. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, but that's what it seems to feel like a lot of times. Like you said, not paying full attention, especially when someone rises so quickly. Yeah. Right? It's hard to pay attention to everything. Everything's so new. So, like, uh, I think... One thing that that clip should cause people to ask themselves again is who, I wanna be? who you said, who you want to be? Yeah, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be? <laughs> but more importantly, who are you? Yeah. Right. And how can you navigate between between who you are and where you want to go? Because maybe you really don't like where you are and some traits that you have going on or whatever, whatever understandable right we all see things we want to improve about ourselves in some form or fashion but there has to be a line of improvement to get there or some way that you can see so you can be aware of what you're doing so because like that lack of vulnerability like this type of conversation and and that type of person being around to kind of call it out i feel like that's what a lot of artists are lacking when they have good music Mm -hmm. and it's just not connecting and like you just like man, this is good. So like I'm gonna give it a B. Like they keep on making those Bs. Like yeah. oh yeah, that's so, I, I can't say it's trash. I can't say anything bad about it. But for some reason, I'm not pushing that replay button. You know what I mean? And it's like that lack of vulnerability where you're not in the music yet. It, it reminds me of I can't remember who it was about, but I never forgot it. It, it was like this young artist that was singing or whatever, and the veteran who was judging him basically said, yeah, man, like you got that voice, like you, you got the entertainment value, you, you, you feel it, but all you need is a little bit more experience so you can connect with what you're singing. Cause she's singing about all these breakups and things like that, but he ain't had no breakup. Well, right? I haven't heartbroken. I haven't had that heartbroken. <laughs> you can feel it when they feel it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, when we were in Tulum, that Lenny Williams song, oh, yeah. right? Everybody yeah. feel that shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody feel that shit. And I saw an interview, right, one day, and they asked him about it, and he was basically like, yeah, yeah it was real bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it's a difference, right? So it was like, and that's kind of a good example of, like, the superhero or projected something that you aren't yet and why it can connect so differently just because you're, you're telling it from the trenches yeah. of that emotion. Right. So, um, man, I mean, you know, I think I think it's something we can all think about in our own brands, influence, content in general um, and public personas. But. Yeah, man, it, it's it's something uh, that artists in particular, we have I have those conversations with artists a lot. I just talked to a dude the other day that was really good in this in this category. And if you could figure out that how to put you in your music. Man. Like there, there's a huge difference, and there's there's impacts that I uh, candidly want to make in categories where I'm like, I care about this cause, but they're not gonna. I'm not the spokesperson for it, yeah. so I'm just gonna have to give money to somebody else <laughs> in that in that area. There's some yeah. things I could be the front facing spokesperson for. There's some things that I need to give money and let the other people rock. Yeah. And that's completely fine, right? Yeah. But you just gotta recognize what that is. <laughs> Every space ain't meant for you. Hey, every space not meant for you to be the face. There we go, <laughs> man. Hey, so next category, next subject. Hopefully that was helpful for y'all. And put drop in the comments, you know, because we love having like brand um, and philosophical conversations, but switching up. Less philosophical, but something to ponder on because Lil Uzi dropped some tips for making great music. Uh-oh. Wait, wait. Not great music, great albums. So do you want to know how to make a great album? I do. Corey, I, I you, you feel like you know the keys to a great album? I feel like I'm like 60% of the way there. You, you 60% of the yeah, way like there? 60%. All right. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing the project, bro. <laughs> All right. So check out this clip right here. Lil Uzi talking to Aiden. You know why Drake albums are great albums? Why? Because it sounds like one long song. You know why Kanye albums are great albums? Why? Because it sounds like one long song. You know why this album is a good album? 
Sorry, Why? Because it sounds like <laughs> Okay, I get it. I know. One long song. Drake albums are great albums because they sound like one long song. Yeezy albums or Yay albums are great albums. One long song. And this Yee album is great because it sounds like one long song. Corey. We both disagree. Yeah, I disagree. In, in many ways. But you know, hey, Uzi, you the artist. You done done what you done done. So we're going to respect it. But from a fan standpoint, we also have our perception of what's great as well. I'm going to start with, look, bro, <laughs> I've turned out a, a lot of shit that's just boring because it sounded like one long song, right? That's my, my starter, yeah. right? Literally, one long song, you didn't do anything interesting. It's like, oh, yeah, you should have just stopped with the first one. And sometimes I could take a repeat, but the rest of them aren't as good as that first one. Because sometimes that one sound has like a hit. It's like, oh, yeah, that song is a hit. But all of your copies of that song just sound like you're copying your own shit. You know how other people mm. copy people's shit and yeah. it's not as good? Yeah. It sounds like you're copying your own stuff and it's not as good. Yeah, like a right? watered down version of yourself. A watered down version of yourself is like the ones that you had to make to create that one and maybe a couple ones after that moment, right? Before you went to sleep or something. So it's th that's what I feel sometimes as a fan. And then on the other hand, back to that one long song, that can't be the only reason. Because what if the song isn't good? I've heard that same instance with songs that just ain't that good. So if it's a mid song. And it's long. And it's long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asleep. I'm asleep. But you characterize great albums in a way that I like. Yeah. I, so I, I get the sentiment Uzi's trying to make. What I disagree is. I don't think a great album is, you know, like I said, every song blends together and sounds like one long song. I think it's kind of like seeing different characters from the same universe, rather, right? Like I prefer every song in the album to um, sound like it's all coming from the same world. So they're unique in their individual attributes, but they make sense and sound like they're being birthed from the same umbrella. I think mm -hmm. that's what makes a great song because then at that point, to your to your point, you can start to see where the sound maybe inspired the rest of the music, but it doesn't sound like it's blatantly copying itself, mm -hmm. right? Like that, that, that's almost one like, have you ever listened to a song from an artist and you could tell that that song was probably inspired by like a different song they made? Like you, it's like you almost could hear them in the same studio session being like, yep. nah, nah, that drum loop saved for this shit, right? But you, you can see how it came from it. Like shit like that, I think is what makes a great, um, a great album because you kind of get to see the artist's thought process a little bit. Um, behind this stuff and it 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 lets you know that they are aware of cohesiveness yeah which is something that i do think is a lost art form um in yes, music when it comes bro. to putting, <laughs> putting projects together cohesiveness. please man <laughs> I, the, I those are the projects i love the most yeah right that have that so your example of being in the same world different characters scenes within that same world 100% makes sense, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Like, you look at Metro Boomin's project that he just dropped a month or so ago, right? It's all the super villain. It's a movie scene, essentially. It feels like that, right? The be the beginning, the origin story, right? Then you get the build up to the climax, and then it goes down and, and hits the resolution. That's all there. Mm -hmm. Now, some of these albums, which I think maybe is his bigger point, just feel like playlist. I see where you're coming from. Like that's probably <laughs> where his bigger point is, yeah. low key. It's like, all right, these songs might have been made in different eras, and a lot of times, sometimes with the record label, like the way things move, they're like, hey, put something together. So you might take a song that you made two, three years ago, and yeah. another song that you made yesterday, and not, oh, I took it two, three years ago, so because I was saving it, and it's perfect with this project. It's like I just put some stuff together. And we had to put some out, right? Yeah. Or we had to keep this song on the project because this helped the numbers look good, yeah. right? And that's that's a whole another thing. But the sense of being in the same world has that value, just because this idea of a mood, right? Like, unless you're going to take me into a space to change my emotion. Typically, you do want to stay in similar emotional space when you listen to a full project. Yeah. And that kind of goes back to one long song, but not exactly, right? So if you look, listen to uh, 
What what album was that? that you, I don't know. I thought, well, I thought of Trey songs. Yeah, I said like, the Weekend's most recent album. The like Weekend's yeah. most uh, recent album, which he's been in the same universe for a long time. Hey man, he, right? You know his bubble, man. That's, <laughs> <laughs> same universe, but he just de- does different representations. He went from like the low life to the high life within the same universe. Yeah, it's, right? it's like in those movies when they go to a different part of the world, and like the globe just turns and it zooms in on the spot. It's like yeah, same shit. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So there's that. What I was thinking actually was um, for some reason I was thinking about the Trey Songs album. The one that his best album to me. I never know the name of the project, but the one that got Penny Dropper. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah, you know, unfortunately, LL Smiley Face, um, which so, is a clear example. Like people listen to, like, why the hell was LOL Smiley Face on that project? Right? Yeah, shouldn't have been there. Broke the I whole. Forgot about that song. Damn. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> the rest of the project was basically like a you know love sex R and B track. Yeah. Like that's what it was. And you could play it all the way through and then you all of a sudden you got this childish song. Like that song was cool for what it is. It's one of the things like don't make me be mean <laughs> about this, bro. Like I'm cool with it. Just put it over there, right? <laughs> like so imagine what do people like to do? R and B projects. They might really be in that mood, right? Like you might actually be playing it while you're while you're doing that thing, or you might just be in the date or whatever. And then that comes on, right? <laughs> That doesn't allow for that. Like that's when that one long song or staying in the same universe matters, right? Yeah. And then of course you got some people that um, you know, there's different moves. But I think the most obvious move and clear move to depict that with is, hey bro, I'm up here trying to smash or mid smash, and then all of a sudden you hit me with some LOL smiley face. <laughs> you know what I mean? That doesn't make sense for you to have thrown that shit in here after you yeah. have penny droppers in. This goes out and see, you know, whatever. I'm not even gonna go through the full track list. <laughs> I, I kind of remember most of that track list in order. So, one long song. I, I think I see what he's trying to say, but you know, you already heard my disagreements with it. Yeah, bro. Now, I just keep turning back to the the movie reference, bro. It's like, imagine a Marvel movie with like eight Iron Mans in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's gonna be some hits in there. Shit gonna, it's gonna be smashing. Yeah. After a while, you're like, damn, bro, I'm kind of I'm kind of sick of Iron Man. Yeah. Man, I want somebody else to say today. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I want some Thor, bro. I want I want a uh, you know what I'm saying? Hope, bro. Somebody, man. See somebody a different move. Yeah, it's like I want yeah. a different origin story, bro. So I look at it like that same that same way, bro. If it all sounds like the same song, even if it sounds like a great song, I think eventually we just are gonna get tired of it. Mm-hmm. You know, our attention spans ain't long enough for that. <laughs> but you know, if they all sound like great individual songs from the same universe, the same yeah. world, they all cohesively go together. They make a very nice Avengers. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm here for, bro. Perfect example is someone just told me not to watch The Matrix, the last one that came out. And I didn't feel like I was going to watch it anyway because they got rid of Morpheus. Well, they didn't get rid of him. They still had him in there, but it was, wasn't was Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah. Lawrence Fishburne still alive. So I was like, it's some bad decisions already being made. <laughs> but they were like, bro, it was the exact same movie. Mm. And that just disappointed me. Like, don't go, don't go watch that shit. It was like it was still the at the end the it was the uh, I forgot the this Mr. Smith or whatever whatever it was still those people controlling stuff and Neo and Trinity were still the saviors in the exact same way. It's like why'd y'all wait all these years and then y'all bring it back and just told the same story, right? Yeah. So nah. Oh, and of course a lesser version of the original too. Again, so it's everything that we just said, and so I like that you went to movies because. I think it more clearly depicts yeah, <laughs> everything about why this ain't exactly ain't exactly right. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, we don't want eight Iron Mans, man. Hey, but Uzi, if you ever make a project that sounds like one long song and it's not good, you know, we know where you were coming from. We we're like, oh, he was going for that or whatever. Yeah. But like, Uzi hasn't even done that. I was just about to say that, bro. That's why <laughs> it, it felt like cap for him. I'm like, bro, you don't even do that, bro. Like, yeah. like his albums sound like individual themes from the same universe yeah. bro like they're all in, in, in uzi land yeah. but it's not it's not fucking uh <laughs> i want to rock 15 times in a row you know what i'm saying so yeah, that's, yeah. That, that'd go. i don't know man i think he's just trying to be on his i think he's trying to rebrand his wise and that was his start you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> i don't know no we, I, I again i i think i know where he's coming from though with it uh obviously he's made great music and maybe it's funny enough sometimes the wrong thing could get you to the right place though so That's maybe true. he has to think that yeah. to create that output, and it's to us, it doesn't really 
come from that space, but it still has an output that we appreciate. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Like yeah. he not he not viewing it through the same lens that we yeah. viewing it through. He's like, to me, this shit sound the same because of whatever. I was like, no, right. no, 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 don't. It's like when <laughs> you be on the same page, or you think you're on the same page with somebody. And then y'all finish each other's sentence and you realize, whoa, hold up, he went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went left, bro. <laughs> Not the same thing. That's that's probably what that is. But hey, you know, it's, it's kind of the opposite. He started with the fork and I think it came together. We're looking at his projects. So look, one long song, y'all see it. I would love to know what y'all think about that one, actually. Mm-hmm. That would be really interesting. But for the last topic of today, my question, my question for y'all is what links? Will you go through to make your content happen? Now, folks who are listening on the pod, you don't have the visual. You need to actually go watch the YouTube video to see this visual that I'm about to play. But this is episode number 24, by the way. Don't forget. But yeah, check this visual out because it's crazy. Boy, camera, action! Every time I've watched that, I got to like laugh a little bit to it. <laughs> then you actually appreciate. So for y'all who are not visually watching, it's basically these young boys going to some very creative lengths to shoot a movie, right? Their own movie off of a phone and the way they put things together. Like they, come on, they, this man using flip flops for the director's. Like, cut oh, the cl- I didn't even peep that. That's <laughs> yeah, crazy. Do I did not even peep that. What? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> like, you got to love it. You got to appreciate it. So, like, again, what lengths are you going to create your content? If you really want to make it happen, you can make it happen. We've all had to get creative to make something we wanted to make shake at man. one point in time. Man. What are you willing to do? And you look at something like this, I think it makes it very clear. Put some mirror up to yourself. <laughs> that time when you said, Hey man, my phone dead, so I'm just not gonna create today. Instead of just putting on the charger and then waiting 30 minutes, you know what I mean? <sighs> Is it really the excuse? But, but no, seriously, I I just really think it's a dope clip, man. Yeah, and like clips like this make you realize one, just like how ingenious and creative people can really be. Because sometimes I'll see people doing things like this to get like wild shots, and I'm like, man, I never would have thought to do that. Like, you know, yeah. they're like, oh, like, yo, how'd you get that that shadow like that? Oh, I like put my phone in the cereal box and then put like a light bulb. And you was like, damn, bro, how'd you even get to that? Like, you know, where, where did that come from? So yeah. I always like saying shit like this, bro. And like, to your point, the whole, it also shows like, bro, whatever's a will, there's a way. If you if you want to make it happen, um, something around you is gonna, is gonna allow you to make it happen. Facts. Bro, like, bro, I was thinking back to like my first YouTube video. I was gonna go watch it the other day, but I didn't want to do that to myself, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, <laughs> but I was thinking about it because well, a lot of people don't know, bro. Like when you first asked me to be on the channel, like I didn't have any camera equipment. Oh, um, word? Yeah, bro, I had no camera equipment. I didn't get I didn't get camera equipment until maybe like six or seven videos into it. The That's Nathan cool. Faust campaign paid for my first camera, so shout out to Nathan Faust. Was, uh, shout you know out to saying? Nathan. Yeah, shout bro. out to Nathan, man. But it's funny, I never even thought about it. Actually, yeah, bro, I did not have a camera, bro. Yeah. Like my very first YouTube video, the way that I had it set up is I had two phones. I was using Sharante's phone mm-hmm. to record the video and I was using my phone to record the audio. So I had like nine books stacked up to like maybe right here. And I had the phone like on top of the first book so I could catch the audio. And then in the back, Sharante was just standing up the whole time like recording me with the phone camera. And that's how I made my first video. Maybe my first like two or three, bro. And so I don't even gotta like, go back and look at those videos. I'm like, man, such such different times. You know what I'm saying? Man. But that shit, had it, it, it got the content out, it worked. Bro. Somebody watched it and was like, hey, bro, this audio trash, but I fuck with what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to stick around and see where this go. And I was like, appreciate you, uh, random commenter. Like, I, I also am willing to stick this out and see <laughs> see where it goes. That's so, all that matters. But I was thinking, like, man, what if I hit you, man? Was like, hey, Sean, I ain't got no camera, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know what we're about to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> who, knows, who knows where life would have went? Hey, <laughs> hey, that's a fact. Cause where I was at that time, I wouldn't have had nothing to do. Like, shoot, bro, I barely got what I got. <laughs> I don't even know. And that's that's crazy though, because like you weren't the first person I ever asked to do just something on the channel or whatever. You're the first one that like I was like, let's make it consistent. I think well, no, it was one other person. It was a young lady. 
And I was just like, you can do whenever you want to. I didn't like say, hey, you need to offer one of, but you know, just put it out there. Yeah. And she seemed to like really want that. So I'm like, all right, yeah, cool. Like, I'm not really super serious with this. Like, I don't feel like I need to be the face for every every video. You know, just when you got something, just shoot me the video and I'll put it up or whatever. And she didn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, like, no. that's not and, what I thought that story was going. No, nah, she didn't. <laughs> it's and it's. A lot of people, bro, that just don't. Yeah. For one reason or another. Like, I think one, you know, some moments it was I got caught up, I'm busy or whatever. I do remember a guy who just didn't put stuff up or whatever. But, like, you did. You know what I'm saying? And then I was just like, man, I'm going to stop asking other people, like, to just to be on there or whatever. Because I was just like, I don't want to, like, be in videos like that at that period of time or whatever. Because that was, like, after I came back from the channel, I was like, let me at least like just give other people some shine or whatever the platform who I think are dope. And then after a while though, I was just like, I'm just gonna stop asking people, but Jacory can do however many he wanna do. Like, <laughs> like I fuck with him, but I'm not gonna ask nobody else no because <laughs> cause you don't even like asking people yeah. and then they don't take advantage of it, especially when it seemed like it's something they want. And yeah. you actually didn't like want to do it want to do it yeah that's the funny thing about it <laughs> like you would never express that i was just like oh you you seem dope you do you seem like you pay attention to shit or whatever like get on there that's not that and that's the funniest part about it <laughs> yeah, man. So, like, eh, hey man how creative are you willing to be when it's time to make shit happen yeah bro I, I, man, I think from a client perspective the wildest thing i've ever seen was uh when Sage did that million stream video where he went skydiving for the content. I don't know if you remember that. No. You never saw that? No, nah, bro, I never saw that one. Yeah, bro, he did a video when, I can't remember what song it was, but when he hit a million streams on it. Oh, uh, he was like, if y'all get this to a million streams, I'll go skydive and vlog it. And then he went skydive for it. And I was like, one, that's crazy, because that motherfucker who just got a thank you on um, post the next day. <laughs> it was me, I'm not sky, I'm not risking my life, because y'all got this on to a million streams. It's only $4,000, get it to 10 million, and then maybe we can talk. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm bro. saying? Yeah, forty bands or more, and I, I risk my life. Bro. You know what I'm saying? But I, I always thought that was cool because I've seen things. I've seen people hanging from trees to get videos, bro. Shit, uh, setups like this, bro. Motherfuckers being pushed in shopping carts and skateboards and all types of stuff, bro. So like, I have learned through the ingenuity of watching other people on TikTok, I um, mean YouTube and things like that. That if if there's a will, there is a way. That's one hundred percent a fact, bro. 100% in the fact. And I got one more video example that I think is perfect for this scenario. I'm going to give you one guess. One? One guess in five seconds. Like on who it is? Chloe yeah. Ray. Lil Yachty. Nope. Damn, right. <laughs> you slid in too. <laughs> 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 nope. It's a perfect example though. And I think you will 100% agree. Check this out right here. Oh. Uh, Oh, uh, yeah. Shout out to Asi. Asi McCamara, her first video. Give give people a little bit of backstory on what's going down right here and why this video is not only dope and the song is dope, but like, why is it doper? Yeah, so this was five. One, well, I got I to gotta paint the picture, man. So this is, what year is this? Three years ago? So 2020. So this is like, I'm a year into being a music marketer. 2019. 2019. So I'm two years in. Yeah, so I'm like a year. I'm a year into being a music marketer. And Aussie was probably one of my like earlier clients, really dope bedroom pop um, artist. You know what I'm saying? She makes, if you like shit like Claro and stuff like that, like you would like her music. Um, but I think at the time, all I was doing for her was maybe a playlisting campaign. And I remember one day we had a phone call and she was like, yo, like what could I do to help you help me make this song get bigger? And I was like, well, if you had a music video, I could run like ads and shit on it and then we could gas up that way. And she's like, oh, well, I don't I don't really have any money to get a music video made, but I'll think of something. Like, I'll do something. Very next day, she texts me and is like, yo, I just sent you an email. Um, do you think this video will be good enough? And it's, it's this video right here. I'm like, oh, this is hard. Like, you got a video made in a day? She's like, oh, I just shot this on my MacBook camera. Right? So she just went in her room. I'm assuming this is like her bedroom or like somewhere in the living room. Set up some plants and, you know, get some little on-screen animations. Bro. And she shot this on her MacBook camera. This video was probably one of my first ever YouTube ad campaigns, and that shit went great. Go look at that song today. It's at maybe like half a million, you know what I'm saying? 
Um, you know what I'm saying? Song, yeah. yeah, like half a million. Well, maybe at this point, I'm Spotify maybe half a million across all platforms, probably at least a million. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Off of a very little amount of ad spend. Like I think that entire campaign, um, we maybe spent like eight hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's that's including the playlisting. So playlisting plus the ads total probably spent like eight hundred dollars to get that song going. But I always fucked with her for that because a lot of people would they would have died when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what do you need to do? To, what do I need to do to make this shit go? Go get me a video. Damn, I got to do some more work. I got to spend some money to make a music video. I got to blah, blah, blah. She was like, hey, man, I ain't got no money. You know what I'm saying? I got a MacBook in the corner. I got a little editing software on my shit. You know, I got a vision. I'm just going to put some shit out. Man. You know, which I'm pretty sure there's a there's a deeper layer in here about, you know, cost of music video and bang for buck that I, I don't yeah. want to super get into. Yeah. But yeah, that, that's why I always fucked with her for this video, bro. Because I was like, man, like the fact that you were willing to go put something together no matter how cheap it may be just to continue the campaign and keep it going says a lot about you as an artist mm -hmm. you know and about like what you willing to do to kind of keep the, the momentum going and keep everything building so yep. yeah man shout out to Aussie man shout out to Aussie MacBook camera not complaining about the quality and this is really and we y'all go hear the song we'll put this in the comments or the description as well like it goes perfect with the, yeah, well, the video it's, and her it's brand really and shit bro it's her beautiful. brand yeah. it really popped her off like People, she got hardcore fans off of this alone. Um, you know, she hasn't really dug into the momentum yet, but it's still it's still there. Like the fans really love her so much. 121k uh, views, 203 comments. Like this was hard. And actually, there's one other person. Um, unfortunately, R.I.P. to John James, but he was somebody I worked with really early on, and. If you just look at his videos, like you go back to these videos and the concepts, like all I can say is the amount of money that he put into this stuff was nowhere near what I thought when I found out. Mm -hmm. like he would, you could just go to his page. Like it was really him doing camera work, like directing everybody, like finessing outfits, calling favors, like, oh, yeah, that's my friend, and all, like all that type of stuff. I don't even, uh, let me see. You can just go to the videos. The quality is ridiculous. I thought dude had mad money when we first started uh, like working together, just because all the videos, and it was far from the truth in terms of like what you in terms of how much money those videos cost. He didn't have nowhere near that kind of money, but he would go to extreme lengths. Matter of fact, unfortunately, I think that he was shooting some type of video when he passed. He, it was a so. I ain't gonna go into the details, but it was like he was skydiving. Actually, I think you just ironically mentioned skydiving oh, or whatever, and that's that's what um, how he died, or whatever. Well, yep, actually, I'm seeing a headline right now. Yeah, he was shooting a music video for that, but he would do stuff and just push it and push it and push it and make stuff happen in a short period of time. Just like we talked about Tyler Perry that a couple of episodes ago, yeah. like how he'll compress, make hey, I'm gonna shoot a whole movie in seven days, right? And I'm gonna like get everybody in order and just make sure. You know, everything's organized, so I don't have to spend that much money. All of that, he was one of those people. So, again, uh, in so many ways, look, what are you willing to do to make it shake? How much do you want it? And I remember Miguel had a quote that he basically felt like the universe is always testing you to make sure you really want what you say you do. Yeah. All right. And, you know, sometimes I don't like to feel like that, but sometimes I begrudgingly agree. Yeah, man. Sometimes that <laughs> challenge come in the form of a dead phone. I'm like, damn, man, my yeah. dreams could die right here because I'm not <laughs> <laughs> along with this phone. Yeah, along with this phone, bro. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. Hey, so yeah, what? Once again, we appreciate y'all for following the podcast this long. We gonna level it up every time. That's hey, look, we doing the same thing. This room ain't oh, <laughs> people. Yeah, boy, people so. like give us up the views and shit. Hey, this room ain't what y'all might think the room is. <laughs> it's wild up in here. Y'all want to see the full room, but it's gonna get better. Remember, we trying to get to a million subscribers. As long as we get y'all's love and support, and y'all keep sharing and watching and just showing love, letting us know that we doing all right, we doing a good job. We gonna make sure we get there. Um, hey. Yet again, it's another episode of No Levels Necessary. I'm Brandman Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.